Hey guys, today we are in 2 Timothy chapter 1. Now, even though this is not the last book of the Bible in the New Testament, this is considered to be the last writing of Paul before he passes. Uh, we will find out later in the letter that he is in prison. He's in Rome. It's not going well. So he writes the second letter. Now, we're not sure the amount of time that has passed between the first letter and the second letter, probably just a year or two. Uh, but in this letter, uh, he's writing to Timothy for um, a couple of things, right? Um, he's writing him to saying, basically, he Paul knows that this is his last letter. So he's telling him it's not going well. His trial is not going well. Number two, uh, he wants Timothy to come to him in Rome so that he can be with him and pour into him before um, Paul passes. Uh, so, uh, but before he comes, he wants Timothy to do two things. He wants to wants Timothy to accept the calling of God in his life, and we'll see that tonight. And then also, he wants Timothy to um, deal, <clears throat> excuse me, with the corrupt teachers that are in Ephesus. The same problem that was going on. In the first letter, still going on, uh, and so Paul basically wants him to stop that before he leaves the church, right? So I hope that helps you. Uh, let's jump right into it, right? So um, we can see in, in verse 4, it says, I remember your tears. I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. We can sense that Paul is longing. He's thinking about his time that he has spent with Timothy, how he has poured into him, uh, his faith. And we can see just this kind of emotional connection. We can even see in the next verse, he says, I am reminded of your sincere faith as well as your grandmother and your mother. So he's he's reminiscing, right? He's reminiscing about the time uh, that he was with Timothy uh, and the faith of his grandmother and his mother and even Timothy himself, even though he was young. Uh, for this reason, verse 6, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on my hands. Uh, we can see here that Timothy, to be a young pastor uh, sent to Ephesus, which was a big church um, that had these issues, Timothy had some amazing spiritual giftedness, but he also was a very timid pastor, probably because of his age. Um, you got to think, it, it's not like today's churches. Back then, uh, it, young men were not preachers. It would have been the oldest of the old. Think um, in the Jewish, right? The oldest of the, of the Jewish rabbis would have been the one speaking. In the Greeks, it would have been the oldest of the old, the white hair, the white beards, these stoic philosophers kind of arguing um, on Mars Hill and all the things that are happening. And now you have this young man. So probably due to his age uh, and a little bit of his inexperience, um, he was timid. But Paul writes here and says, fan into flame, right? Just you're called, you, you, you have the giftedness, get to it, right? Remember, put your strength in God, not in yourself. Verse seven, for God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. What a great verse, right? Just think about back in COVID, all, all the people that were so fearful. God never gave us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power and of love and steadfastness, right? And self-control. And so uh, just important reminding him. And now we see in verse eight, my favorite word, therefore, when you see therefore, you find out what it's there for, right? So since God has given us power of love and self-control, not to be timid, therefore, Timothy, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel of power of God. I think today we take it for granted um, exactly what what being a Christian really is. 
Think of this young man named Timothy, this young pastor who's going into a Gentile nation who is polytheistic, worshiping lots of gods, lots of idols, lots of things. And yet the guy, the God that he is preaching was crucified by Roman soldiers. And the greatest preacher of this man, Paul, is imprisoned in Rome. It doesn't give you to our mental status, to our mental capabilities, it doesn't give you a big platform to stand on. I'm preaching about a God and its most famous preacher is both been, uh, one's been killed and crucified. One is in prison and is looking to get killed by, um, by Caesar. And so in this idea, this frame of mind, he's telling Timothy, hey, don't be ashamed of the death of Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed that I'm in jail, right? Put your emphasis in uh, Jesus and his resurrection. And so he says, don't be ashamed, but share in suffering. Not only is it bad or hard to teach about the death of Jesus and the imprisonment of Paul, but he's saying you too should share in that. Bad things are going to happen to you. Jesus told us that for his Christians, bad things are going to come. And so he tells him to uh, do not be ashamed. And then in verse nine, we get some great verses, right? And it's really the gospel message. Paul is reminding him of his calling. So, um, but share in the sufferings for the gospel of the power of God. What is it? That God saved us, called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his purpose and his grace, right? Salvation is not by works, but it is by faith in Jesus Christ, by his grace in which he is given in Christ Jesus before the ages begin. It's not just that you need to focus that Jesus was crucified, but Jesus has always been from the very beginning, from Genesis chapter 1, 1, he was there. And which now has been manifested, which has been made manifold, has appeared, the appearing of our Savior Christ. John chapter 1, in the beginning, the word, logos, became flesh. God became man, who was Jesus. And he, and he abolished death, brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, I know not everybody goes to Green Acres that is watching these, and I know not everybody is up to date, but if you remember, uh, if you are at Green Acres, if you remember October 1st sermon, we talked about the kingdom of God. It is physical, spiritual, eternal. Now, ready? Watch this out. You're going to start seeing this everywhere. Jesus abolished death, physical, brought life, spiritual, and immortality, eternal, right? So Jesus brings the kingdom, the kingdom of God, which is those three things. Um, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle, uh, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed. Paul is not ashamed. And so Timothy should not be ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day which was entrusted to follow me, right? I bet you Erlene is singing a hymn. I think this brings up a pretty good hymn, and I just can't remember it, but I know, I know Erlene knows, so ask her on Sunday. Um, but I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, Jesus Christ, and I am convinced that he is able, more than able, to what? To guard that day which has been entrusted to me. Paul is saying, I believe in Jesus and I know Jesus has me until the day he comes back or until the day I die that I see him. It's the full trust in Jesus Christ. And so Paul is reminding Timothy of his calling of the gospel and to make sure that he remembers that assurance of salvation that gives us hope, faith, and conviction for the gospel. Verse 13, follow the pattern of the sound words. We call that doctrines. Follow God's word, right? Don't get off track. Follow God's words. 
that you have heard from me in faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. The good deposit was what? Is the sound words, is God's word. That's the job of a pastor, that you would find God's word, you would rightly divide God's word, and you would make sure it is as accurate as it can be. Sure, we should be funny. Sure, we should do jokes. And yes, we do illustrations. And yes, we do lots of other things. But no matter what, make sure we are solid on God's word. And then he finishes uh, this first chapter. Uh, you are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me among whom, and he goes through, right? He starts to list these people. Paul is just reminding Timothy that these people who are in Ephesus, they turned away from Paul. Paul, Paul was teaching a gospel and they removed themselves away from that gospel, away from that doctrine. So he says, people have left me. Guess what, Timothy? People are going to leave you. People are not going to believe what you're preaching, but stay true to God's word. Stay convicted. Don't be timid. Keep preaching. Remember the call of God on your life. That's chapter one. Hope that makes sense. And we will see you tomorrow in chapter two. God bless.